it's going to be okay. The film begins with an introduction to the main character, Mike Howell, who is currently in a holding cell, handcuffed. One of the interrogation officers enters the room, while an unfamiliar man observes them from outside. Mike experiences a series of vivid flashes, recalling events from the past couple of days. Images of evidence, including a bloody spoon, a frying pan, and a shot of a teddy bear, are placed on the table. Three days prior, Mike was living peacefully in Lyman, West Virginia, with his girlfriend, Phoebe. They both enjoy cannabis, and Mike is deeply in love with her, describing her as perfect. He had planned a surprise trip to Hawaii for them, hoping to propose. Unfortunately, every time Mike tries to leave town, he experiences a panic attack, causing them to miss their flight. He's uncertain why this happens, but he can't control it. During their drive back home, Mike repeatedly apologizes to Phoebe. Although it's evident that she's bothered, she reassures him it's not his fault and forgives him. The next day, Mike returns to his unfulfilling job as a clerk at the local convenience store, where he stocks shelves and works the register. Business is usually slow, so Mike spends his free time perfecting his original comic book featuring Apollo 8, a monkey astronaut on adventurous journeys. During a quick smoke break outside, it's revealed that the CIA has been secretly monitoring him. He was previously part of a classified operation called the Ultra Program, but oddly, he has no recollection of it. At CIA headquarters, Victoria Lassiter is seen examining classified files in her office. Her former assistant, Peter Douglas, bids her farewell before leaving for the night. Suddenly, she receives an unexpected phone call. On the other end, a disguised and distorted voice informs her that the Ultra Program's enforcer is now active, targeting Howell and stating he'll be eliminated within 24 hours. Agent Lassiter objects to the operation, but is instructed not to interfere, as it's merely a courtesy call. Later, Lassiter confronts another agent, Adrian Yates, who has been avoiding her. She tells Yates that they're supposed to safeguard their former assets, not eliminate them. Yates argues that Mike poses a potential threat, and his determination to leave town is viewed as a security breach. They continue to dispute the matter, and Yates eventually loses his temper, stating that Howell will die today, and there's nothing she can do to salvage her failed project. Back in West Virginia, Mike and Phoebe spend their evening together, sharing a joint and exchanging ideas for Mike's comic book. They're parked at one of their favorite hangout spots and notice a tow truck retrieving a recently crashed car from a tree. In his stone state, Mike begins talking about the car and the tree. He vividly contrasts the car as a dynamic entity, ceaselessly in motion with boundless potential, while the tree, in stark contrast, stands still, unassuming, and seemingly passive, until this very night when it halted the car's movement. Overwhelmed with emotion, he breaks down, metaphorically likening himself to the tree, and Phoebe to the car, suggesting that he might be holding her back in life. In an attempt to console him, she reassures him that it's not the case. Later, they return home and go to sleep. The following morning, Mike fibs to Phoebe, claiming he needs to go to work early. Instead, he meets up with his friend Rose to illicitly acquire a box of fireworks. Despite the failed Hawaii trip, Mike remains determined to propose to Phoebe and plans to use the fireworks for a spectacular display later that evening. Agent Lassiter arrives at the convenience store to warn Mike of the imminent threat to his life. She approaches the cash register holding a cup of instant noodles and a bottle of milk. She cryptically communicates, mentioning Mandelbrot said, Echo Choir breached, and fielding the ball. Mike is clearly baffled and asks if she's alright. Victoria grows frustrated, quickly shifting to concern for Mike. The code she speaks is meant to activate his hidden abilities, but Mike shows no sign of comprehension. After several unsuccessful attempts, Agent Lassiter apologizes and departs. Mike warms up the leftover cup of soup and eats outside. It's then he notices two men tampering with his car. He warns them to stay away, but they approach him brandishing knives. It turns out that Agent Lassiter's activation code had worked after all. Mike swiftly reacts, splashing hot soup onto one assailant's face, then disarming the other using the spoon. He stabs one in the neck before using their own gun to fatally shoot them both. Terrified, he calls Phoebe, explaining the situation. She rushes over, finding the deceased men, visibly shocked. She asks Mike why they were attacked, to which he replies that he has no clue. Before they can piece together what to do, the local sheriff arrives and arrests them both. Adrian Yates learns that they've lost two operatives tasked with eliminating Mike. He quickly deduces that Lassiter has activated him. He orders his team to lock down the town by any means necessary and assigns two new agents to carry out Mike and Phoebe's execution at the police station, agents Crane and Laffer. Inside the jail, Mike and Phoebe review the events. Mike tells Phoebe about the woman who approached him at work. 
To their surprise, he flawlessly recalls the code. This astonishes him since his memory is typically unreliable. For some inexplicable reason, he can precisely remember the last 94 minutes. The sheriff relocates them to another room for questioning, but suddenly, the power cuts out, and an alarm blares throughout the building. Agent Crane storms through the front entrance, unleashing a barrage on the officers, while Agent Laffer sneaks through the back to personally dispatch Mike. Mike's ultra instincts continue to heighten, and he defeats Laffer in close combat, using his handcuffs as makeshift brass knuckles. He pummels Laffer repeatedly and locks him inside a cell before making his escape. Meanwhile, Agent Crane has dispatched all the remaining officers. As she prepares to deal with the sheriff, the power is restored, and she glimpses Mike and Phoebe attempting to flee on the security cameras. They narrowly evade gunfire, but Crane implores Mike to wait and hurls a grenade towards him. He catches it and swiftly hurls it back before it detonates, obliterating the police station. Mike approaches Crane to finish her off. Mike and Phoebe head back to the store where Mike left his car. Phoebe is anxious to leave town, but Mike insists he can't. They begin to panic, and while discussing an escape plan, a gust of wind blows a bag onto Mike's car, triggering a bomb planted earlier by one of the henchmen. Agent Lassiter tries to flee town, but soon realizes it's on lockdown, spotting men in hazmat suits. She contacts Yates, who informs her of their fabricated story about a disease outbreak to ensure nobody escapes, including her. After the call, Lassiter comes across the burning station and discovers Agent Crane's lifeless body outside. She reaches out to Petey, revealing Yates's deadly intentions and the plan to trap her. Demanding airdrop coordinates for a weapon and files on Yates's assets, FTD reluctantly complies, sending a package with guns and information on Crane and Laffer. As she studies the files, Victoria realizes that Yates is using patients from asylums for his program. She contacts Petey once more, urging him to stop this, but he regretfully informs her he can no longer assist. It turns out Yates got wind of the situation and threatened Petey with treason, moments before Lassiter's call. Elsewhere, Yates's team establishes a base near the local supermarket. He approaches a truck full of sleeper agents, including Laffer who survived the station explosion. Yates decides to deploy them, along with a few others, to track down Mike. Since Mike's car was destroyed in the explosion, they opt for Phoebe's car, driving to Rose's home for safety. On their way, Mike's memories continue to fragment, and he tells Phoebe that suddenly, he comprehends everything about guns, tanks, and explosives. Upon arriving at Rose's, he's met with suspicion, as the news claims Mike and Victoria are the origin of the typhoid outbreak, contracting it from monkeys. They're advised to keep their distance. Mike attempts to explain, but Rose confines him and Phoebe in his basement while they deliberate. Sleeper agents infiltrate the premises, releasing a toxic gas through the vents. Another agent enters, killing Rose and his two friends in the basement. Mike and Phoebe try to escape through the ceiling, but one agent smashes the door, targeting Mike. Swiftly, Mike dispatches the agent with a kettlebell, while Phoebe grabs the gas mask and rushes outside. She shoots the agent responsible for the gas, retrieving an antidote from his body and administering it to Mike. He feels drowsy, and Phoebe warns him that the inhaled gas is dangerous, potentially lethal if he loses consciousness. As Mike starts to fade, he experiences flashes of memories with Phoebe, some he doesn't recall living. Briefly, he relives his last CIA interview, but the person across the desk is Phoebe. He snaps back to reality, pushing Phoebe away. He asks her how she knew about the specific gas used. Hesitant, Phoebe confesses she works for the CIA and was assigned as Mike's handler over five years ago. Mike confronts Phoebe, questioning if their relationship was ever genuine. Phoebe tries desperately to explain, but Mike, feeling betrayed, flees to her car. Phoebe follows him inside and implores him to hear her out. The conversation escalates into an argument when suddenly, a jeep driven by Laffer collides with their car, sending it off the bridge. Laffer retrieves Phoebe from the overturned car and receives instructions to bring her back alive. Laffer informs Mike that he's about to commit a grave act. He proceeds to douse the car in gasoline, dropping a lighter onto it. As he attempts to rouse Phoebe, Lassiter arrives and assists Mike out of the car just before it explodes. Laffer takes Phoebe to their camp, where she's astonished to discover that Yates is in charge of the operation. Yates finds amusement in her questioning his authority, reminding her that she never returned for her debrief and chose to date her assignment instead. He cruelly informs her that her boyfriend was burned alive and proceeds to arrest her for insubordination. Meanwhile, Lassiter takes Mike to a safe location and asks if he recognizes her. Confused, Mike demands answers. She calmly recounts their history, explaining that they first met when he was arrested at 18. 
At the time, she was recruiting individuals for a program called Wiseman, targeting third strike misdemeanor offenders to offer them a second chance through CIA work. She reveals that among all the subjects, he excelled, but the experiment was pushing him towards madness. They shut down the operation and erased his memory to safeguard him. They subjected him to extensive psychiatric tests, implanting fake phobias such as leaving town. A man spots them outside and reports it to local authorities, which eventually reaches Yates and his team. Mike and Lassiter return to Mike's house, where he expresses a preference for a contented, stone demise rather than fighting. Simultaneously, Yates instructs Petey to deploy a drone strike to obliterate Mike's home. Petey, visibly anxious, reluctantly complies. As Lassiter guards the house, Mike gets high, she reveals to him that Phoebe always had faith in him and that her role was simply to settle him into town before returning to the CIA. Shortly after, a squad of agents swarms the house to confirm Mike's location. A shootout ensues, and Lassiter uses a teddy bear as an improvised silencer to kill one of the agents. Despite having his soldiers on site, Yates orders the drone strike to proceed. In a fit of anguish, Peter smashes a table and refuses to bear responsibility for Lassiter's death. In the end, he defies Yates's orders, cancelling the airstrike. He becomes increasingly panicked, aware that he may face retribution for his actions. He makes a phone call to Raymond Kruger, the head of CIA operations and the enigmatic figure observed watching Mike in the opening scene. At the house, Mike finds himself cornered in the kitchen, but he spots a falling frying pan. His instincts kick in, and he hurls the pan into the air, deflecting a bullet and killing the soldier aiming for him. Yates tries to call Lassiter, but Mike answers. Yates instructs Mike to meet him at the local supermarket, but Mike requests to speak with Phoebe. She apologizes for everything and explains her analogy, likening herself to the tree and Mike to the car. She reassures him he doesn't owe her anything, but Yates abruptly ends the call. Undeterred, Mike resolves to go to the supermarket and rescue Phoebe. Armed with the box of fireworks he purchased from Rose, Mike crashes through the glass doors of the supermarket. Using the intercom, he reassures Phoebe of their safety and professes his love. He takes on the agents inside, employing whatever he can find as weapons. Meanwhile, Phoebe discreetly grabs a paperclip. Mike employs a firework for cover and uses a sledgehammer to dispatch the remaining agents. Emerging from the smoke, Yates orders Laffer to finish Mike and flees with Phoebe. In a separate room, Phoebe informs Yates that her so-called lab rat boyfriend will be the end of him. Using the paperclip, she frees herself, delivering a punch to Yates. Lassiter approaches from behind, nearly strangling him with a cable. Kruger arrives, directing them all to accompany him. Meanwhile, Mike and Laffer conclude their battle. Mike seizes Laffer's pistol and holds him at gunpoint. Laffer, acknowledging his defeat, confesses that they manipulated his mind and he had no control over his actions. He acknowledges Mike as a superior agent, and Mike, showing empathy, chooses to spare him. Mike and Phoebe reunite, heading outside to face a SWAT team and armed troopers aiming their rifles. Seizing the moment, Mike proposes to Phoebe, but their joy is cut short when they're tased by the officers. In the aftermath, Kruger restrains Yates and Lassiter, leading them into the woods. He emphasizes the gravity of their actions, holding them accountable for the deaths of many. When Yates attempts to shift blame onto Lassiter, Kruger reminds him that he initiated the unauthorized operation and shoots him twice in the chest. Kruger then turns to Lassiter, disclosing that he was the anonymous caller who tipped her off. He admits it was out of respect, but now he regrets it. Lassiter persuades him that Mike remains a valuable asset, highlighting his impressive solo takedown of 17 tough guy assets. The scene shifts back to the initial holding cell, and the interrogator refers to Mike as Agent Howell. Six months later, Mike and Phoebe are in the Philippines, seemingly on a romantic vacation. Mike leaves Phoebe at the front desk, and she gazes into a concealed camera, where Agent Lassiter and Petey are observing them. Mike steps into an elevator, where he's intercepted by two Mandarin gangsters, as planned by Victoria. The gang leader taunts and threatens Mike, but Mike takes in his surroundings and springs into action. The movie concludes with their fight illustrated in cartoon form, as depicted in Mike's comic book. Thank you for staying till the end. Your support on my channel would mean a lot. As always, catch you in the next one.